Hi, and thanks again for trying out Hazura Cloud. I want to take roughly the next eight to 10 minutes and give you a personal walkthrough of how do we add a database, how do we create tables, how do we do data modeling, and how do we do relationships and querying of that data inside of Hazura. So we're going to start with going to the data tab here. And when I hop in there, you'll notice that I don't actually have a database created yet. That's no problem. I can either bring one of my own or I can go ahead and provision one from a service called uh, Heroku. I'm gonna go ahead and choose that option. Now, I've already authenticated myself. It's a very painless process, but I'm gonna go ahead and just simply hit create database here. And that's gonna run through the, the process of, of spinning up a database on Heroku servers, getting the connection string, bringing it over inside of, uh, inside of Hazura for me. And now I'll have a database here and connected and away we go with, with this lovely little name there, uh, floating chamber. All right, so now we'll see that I have the public database uh, created. The next step is gonna to be to add some tables so that we can start adding data to our system. I'm gonna use a abstracted example here, uh, shapes, right? So it's gonna be like circles and squares and just allow us to sort of see how we might work with collections of things, entries, those kind of, of primitives for data modeling just to kind of get our, our juices flowing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to uh, the public database here. I'm going to go ahead and hit create table and we're just going to call this first one shapes and I'm going to give this a, uh, a unique ID. If I click on this little uh, frequently used columns, these are just a bunch of values people often tend to use uh, for, for data, uh, data modeling. I'm going to grab a UUID here. I'm just going to annotate my metadata to tell it that it is unique. I'm going to go ahead and add another one here. We're just going to pop on the created app. We're going to pop on the updated app. Just some very basic data types that we're used to using. And I'm gonna add a name field here uh, for a string. Now, these are all Postgres, uh, or in my case, because I have a Postgres, Postgres database, these are Postgres compatible data types. So if it can work in Postgres, you'll find that listed there. You can define custom ones, that's out of scope for this little video here, but uh, basically, short to say, you can support it inside of Hazura. So whatever data type you might need, special kinds of floats, special kinds of data, uh, data formatting or uh, date formatting, we, we support it. So we have all those added. I'm gonna just show you one last piece here. If I go ahead and say, uh, let's maybe call this like a label field. That's maybe some sort of an annotation or description. I uh, would we'll give this a text as well, but I'm gonna check box that as nullable, which means that that's gonna be something that I could leave empty inside of my database, and I'm not gonna run into any issues with that. Great, we have that set up. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just simply identify already, um, actually, I'm gonna skip that to the next step. So I'm gonna just leave this for, for where it is right now. This is all I need. I have a unique key identified, primary key also identified. Um, I'm just gonna leave that as is. Go ahead and hit add table. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and make another table uh, called a set. And that set is going to go ahead and allow me to sort of uh, group some of these shapes together like I would expect for, um, yeah, data modeling. <laughs> so let's go ahead and create another table here. I'm gonna call this one a set. And now this is gonna be really simply an ID here. Uh, I'm not actually gonna remove that because what I wanna do is I wanna use the, uh, the generated one here. I'm gonna go ahead and just call this one uh, unique and I'm gonna give it a name again. Uh, I want that to also be existing, so we'll leave it there. And I'll go ahead and define this as a text type. And now I've got two different tables here uh, created. I wanna go ahead and add table. Now, when it comes to the data modeling, if I wanna kind of have this idea of, of sort of, um, all right, sorry, I had to catch my, catch my train of thought there for a minute. Uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna connect these, these sets and these shapes together, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually identify a relationship between the two of them that will allow us to have, in this case, an array relationship. An array just means that we're gonna have a, a set of, of items inside of our set. So to do that, I'm gonna hop back over to my shape, and I'm gonna go ahead and add and modify this database here. I'm gonna go ahead and put in something called the set ID. And that's going to be a uh, UUID or uh, ID type, or UUID type, because it's called uh, it's called the ID, not, not called the UUID. And we're gonna go ahead and say that this can be nullable, so this way shapes may or may not be in a particular set. We'll go ahead and hit save. 
And when I do that, I'm gonna have another option here where I can go and look at my foreign keys here. I can go ahead and do this in traditional database modeling primitives where I do foreign key assignments. I can also do uh, relationships very, really painlessly in Hazura by going to the relationships tab here. I'm gonna go ahead and configure a new relationship. I'm gonna go ahead and configure one here. I'm gonna say that what I want to have happen is it's an array relationship. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and call this on shapes. We're gonna go ahead and call this the uh, set. And we're actually gonna do that as a reverse. Uh, this is an object one, so this is gonna be a one-to-many relationship for a cardinality. I'm gonna go ahead and say this references the uh, set uh, table, and we're gonna say the set ID is gonna be a reference to the ID field of the uh, set itself. Go ahead and hit save on that. And now we've created a relationship where we're able to say that um, the shape belongs into a set, and then on the reverse side, the set is gonna be able to own many shapes and we're gonna go ahead and add a modification here as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add the uh, reverse side relationship now. I'm gonna go ahead and define this one as an array relationship, and what I'm gonna say is that this is gonna be called my shapes now, and I'm gonna say that this references the shapes tab, and what this does is my ID is going to be the uh, set ID on my uh, set itself. Let's go ahead and hit save on that. And I've configured now the reverse relationship. So we have uh, both the set to shapes, which is gonna be a one to many, and then the uh, many to one for the reverse side. Okay, we have the relationships created. Let's go ahead and add some data into these fields. I'm gonna go back to the shapes uh, uh, database here. I'm gonna go ahead and say insert row. This is gonna get auto-generated. These will all be auto-generated. For the name here, I'm gonna go ahead and call this a circle. We'll go ahead and hit save. I'm gonna go ahead and add another field here. We're gonna call this a uh, square. I'm gonna call this one a rectangle. And then the last one we'll just call as a triangle. Great, so we have some really basic shape primitives in this case. And I'm gonna go ahead and make one set uh, to follow up with this. I'm gonna go ahead and say that I want this to be a, uh, a four, corner, uh, four corner shapes set. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and inspect this data here. So I'm gonna go ahead and browse the rows of data that I have added. I can see here that I have this really long uh, UUID here, and this is from my four corner shapes. If I go back over to the shapes uh, table now, uh, edit this one there with a little pencil, that's what I wanted right there, a square. We're gonna go ahead and drop the set ID just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and go back to the data and we're going to inspect the uh, rectangle, I think is the remaining four corner shape. We'll go ahead and drop the ID in there. And now we should have this relationship connected. What we can do now is when we go and actually look at graphical now, so uh, this is not the intro to GraphQL talk, um, <laughs> but what we'll go ahead and inspect here is when I go inside now to my, my uh, set, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drill down on there, get the name of it, I should have the ability to now pop down on my shapes themselves. And this now says, look for the connection between the sets and the shapes, and I'm just grabbing the name fields off of those, and when I go ahead and run that, what it's gonna do is it's gonna build that out, and it's gonna say, okay, you have the four corner shapes, you have the square, you have the rectangle, and that's how you create databases, that's how you do tables, that's how you do relationships, and that's how you query for them. All right, if you have any questions, do reach out to us on Discord or on GitHub, and we are happy to chat. Thanks, bye.